In the name of God, the abundantly merciful and intensely merciful, prayers be upon Muhammad and the family of Muhammad, the Imams and Mahdi's. In this video, I wanted to go over a couple of questions. Uh, these questions are misconceptions surrounding the will of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now the will of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that I'm talking about, that I will be talking about, is the one in which the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had written before he passed away, meaning in the night of his death. Uh, this will is found in the book Ghaybat al-Tusi. It's a Shia book. It mentions the names of the Imams and it's the only will that exists. Uh, out of all books, it exists in the book of Ghaybat al-Tusi and it mentions that after the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, passes away, uh, there will be 12 Imams and 12 Mahdi's. So in total, there will be uh, 24 successors after the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family. Uh, one of the misconceptions raised against the will of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that, uh, you know, they say that, well, the Prophet made a lot of wills, so what makes this special? Now, the answer to this is that uh, the will of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, the Prophet says about it that it is a statement that will never lead you astray. Now it's mentioned in Al-Bukhari, uh, for example, uh, that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he commanded the companions uh, to bring him a pen and a paper so that he can write for the companions, uh, in fact for the Muslims, uh, something that will never lead the people astray. أَكْتُبُ لَكُمْ كِتَابًا لَنْ تَضِلُّ بَعْدِ أَبَدًا And so we also um, read in the book uh, Sulaym ibn Qais that Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam he says uh, that this this statement this will that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to write uh, after when there was a disagreement in the calamity of uh, in the calamity of Thursday, when there was a disagreement, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he commanded Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam and told him about the successors that will come after him, the names of the successors. Uh, it says in Sulaim bin Qais that uh, it is a writing that two people will not even differ if they hold on to it. So it's basically a solution to division, a solution to, uh, to having sects after the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family. So this will is the solution to division because through division you will find people killing each other and fighting one another. And, uh, you know, it'll, it'll, like the Islamic community will be a house divided on itself. And a house divided on itself is a house of Satan. Okay, division is bad. It can lead to the killing of uh, the man of God who whom God has appointed. So, the Prophet wrote this will, and he had it written, and it mentions the names of the successors after him. Now, people, um, in the time of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, there were people that did not want the Prophet to write the will. Um, among these people were uh, ones that, you know, they lived with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and so there was someone who stood up and said, "The Quran is enough for us; it is sufficient for us." The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, uh, he wanted to do something, and so this man intervened and said, "The Quran is sufficient." 
And then he uh, basically accused the Prophet of uh, being delirious. As what is said in Al-Bukhari, that he is delirious. Delirious is basically someone uh, who's senile and so he's starting to talk nonsense. And how can the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talk nonsense when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا ينطق عن الهوى He does not speak from his own desires. It is a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in Surah Al-Najm it says, لا ينطق عن الهوى He never speaks from his own desires. So how can you say that he is delirious? And whatever he says, it is part of the risala, it is part of the message. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, He commands the Prophet, Ya ayyuhar Rasul, Ballig. Ballig. So, O oh Messenger, Ballig ma unzila ilayka min rabbik. He says, Ballig, preach. Preach. Uh, what has been revealed to you from your Lord. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala threatens the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and says, فَإِن لَمْ تَفْعَلْ If you do not, فَإِن لَمْ تَفْعَلْ فَمَا بَلَّغْتَ رِسَالَةَ If you do not, you have not preached the message. وَاللَّهُ يُعْصِمُكَ مِنَ النَّاسِ that, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you from the people. So Allah is commanding him. Now, if we go to the interpretations of the Shias, of course, would say that this is related to Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Even those who are not Shia, books who are not Shia, like Al-Wahidi. Uh, Al-Wahidi has a book of Asbab al-Nuzul. Asbab al-Nuzul means uh, reasons for uh, revelation in uh, number 402 to 403 you will see the uh, the reason for the revelation of this verse and it is narrated from Abu Sa'id al-Khudri who is a very close companion to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says that this verse is tied to Ali ibn Abi Talib and according to them, they say, رضي الله عنه, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him. So in this book of Al-Wahidi, uh, he gave the reason for the revelation of this verse, and it's one of the top ten books of Asbab al-Nuzul, reasons for revelation. Al-Wahidi. He says that this verse, O Rasul, preach from what has been revealed to you from your Lord, for if you do not, you have not preached the message and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you from the people. He says, this is tied to Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Okay. This verse is tied to Ali ibn Abi Talib. Now, the question is, when did this happen? This happened in Ghadir Khum. Ghadir Khum uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gathered his companions and said to his, to his companions that I left amongst you two weighty things, the Qur'an and the Ahlul Bayt. Qur'an and the Ahlul Bayt. مَا أَن تَمَسَّكْتُمْ بِهُمَا لَن تَضِلُّوا بَعْدِ أَبَدًا If you hold on to these two, you will be, uh, you'll be forever guided. It will never, they will never lead you astray. He said, Quran and Ahlul Bayt. And in Sahih Muslim, uh, the Prophet says three times, Udhakkirakum fi Ahl Bayti, that I remind you of my Ahlul Bayt. He says three times, he's telling them. Now, the companions got the general message that it's Ahlul Bayt in the Sermon of Farewell. And, and uh, the Prophet raised the hand of Ali ibn Abi Talib salam. Two months later, now this was in Dhul Hujjah, in Dhul Hujjah, the, in the month of Dhul Hujjah, two months later, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wants to make it absolutely clear to the companions and to all the Muslims 
as to who will be the successors after him. So he said to his companions, Come, let me write you a statement after which you will never be led astray. Give me a pen and paper so that I can write for you a statement. It will never lead you astray. Because what is mentioned in Ghadir Khum was, uh, you know, they, people were still in doubt. They did not know who Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, uh, were. They were in doubt. Uh, some said that it's the, the family of Abbas or the family of, uh, you know, like Aqil and others. So they were in doubt. So the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, wants to remove this, um, you know, you can say this, uh, this confusion. So he mentions to them that I'm going to write for you a statement that will never lead you astray. And now this is part of his message. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanding the Prophet. It's still uh, uh, like the, the command is still in effect. The, com the command, or you can say the, the message is still not complete. This is part of the message because after when he does or fulfills this uh, command, he would have then completed the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted. The Prophet is of course obedient and he is of great moral character. And of course, he will uh, obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the, now the, the, the command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us is to follow the Prophet. As what is said in Surah Al-Nisa, أُطِيعُوا اللَّهُ وَأُطِيعُوا الرَّسُولُ وَأُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us, Obey Allah and the Prophet and those who are vested with authority. Those who are vested with authority among us are the successors after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam. So there were people, there were uh, two groups of people. One group did not want this will written and the other group wanted the will to be written. And Ibn Abbas, it is said in, on, on the... On the Thursday, or you can say, yeah, on, on the day of Thursday, he was crying and wanted the will to be written. But unfortunately, on the day of Thursday, uh, there was someone who w wanted to prevent the Prophet from having this will written. So several days after Thursday, on Monday, it's mentioned in Ghaybat al-Tusi that on the night, as it said in the will, uh, that Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, he mentions the names of the successors after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And from uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, his name, uh, was mentioned until the first Mahdi, the first Mahdi of the 12 Mahdis. So all these successors' names were mentioned in this will, uh, which is a protection from misguidance, so that the Islamic community would rely on this will to know the names of the successors of God after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now for those who say that the Prophet Muhammad did not write this will, I will read for them hadiths from Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. I will in fact read uh, one of the hadiths from the Prophet Muhammad saying, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, man lam yahsin al wasiya inda mawtih, which means who, whoever does not perfect the will during his death, uh, he is someone that is deficient in his mind and in his maturity. 
So far be it that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is deficient in his mind and his maturity that he did not leave a will before he passed away. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, left a will uh, in the night of his death. Here it says, who does not perfect his will, indamote, meaning indalihtidar, which means when he reaches death. And the Quran says uh, that whoever, um, or it, it is prescribed upon you, that whoever reaches death, if he leaves any good, it is the will. Now there is a misconception that says good here is referring to wealth, money. Our response to this is a simple response. In the Holy Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 269, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَنْ يُؤْتَى الْحِكْمَةَ مَنْ يُؤْتَى الْحِكْمَةَ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, وَمَنْ يُؤْتَى الْحِكْمَةَ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا That whoever is given wisdom, has been given a lot of good. So wisdom is not money. Okay? Wisdom is not money. Uh, Allah describes it as khayran kathira. So he describes wisdom as a lot of good. And what is the best good that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would leave before he passes away? It is, of course, the will that is a protection from misguidance. The will of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I end and this video. Uh, and thank you everyone for listening. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Alimata wal mahdina wa sallam taslima kathira.